Hello! It's time to start a brand new sketchbook. It's still wrapped in plastic. I'm so excited to open this, so let's get into it. Well, that's rather fancy, isn't it? That's a beautiful cover. It feels wonderful. I love a brand new sketchbook. There's just such a nice feeling when they are so pristine like this. So briefly before I get into this one, here is my previous sketchbook. I've just done a video on this. I decorated the cover and I did a flip through of the whole book so you can check that out. I'll link it at the end of this video. This is an Etcher sketchbook and I had some real issues with the paper sizing breaking down so a lot of my paintings at the end of the book just weren't working very well because the paper was absorbing the paint rather than letting the watercolour sit on top. So I am pretty disappointed pointed with the etcher books that I had I decided not to get any more and instead I'm going to try out one of these brand new Hannah Mueller watercolor books these have only been on the market for a few months and they're not exactly cheap but I thought I would get a nice quality book to do my YouTube videos in because I often do painting reviews and things like that so this is what this book is for and I thought that I would give the Hannah Mueller watercolor book a go it is 100% cotton it's 250 GSM normally I like 300 GSM paper but 250 I'm sure will be fine it's got 60 pages or 120 sides and it's an A4 size which is what I like to paint on when I'm doing my videos because it's something bigger and I can also fit in the swatches I'm going to peel off this label and we'll see what the paper's like. I've used a few others by Hannah Mueller but not the cotton ones so I'm really hoping this one's going to be good. So it's got the rooster embossed on the back. It's a very nice smooth fabric cover. I don't know that I want to decorate this one, it's too lovely. But let's open it up, see what she looks like on the inside. It's slightly off-white with a cream colour and it looks like the texture of this inside page is quite smooth. There's a little bit of texture there, but I'm not sure if that's just a cover, so I'll keep flipping. No, it actually seems to be the whole book is in this watercolour paper. That is beautiful. It is so much smoother than the Etcher sketchbook paper, which has a significant tooth on it. And sometimes I found that that was a little bit limiting in what I could use in the book. Like, for instance, I didn't really want to use watercolour pencils in the Etcher book because the paper's just too rough. But this looks like it would take watercolour pencils quite well. Hopefully you could see there is a bit of a cold press texture on it. I do like a cold press book. And it looks like it lies perfectly flat. It is beautifully bound, but so far I'm really liking the look of this book. It is super high quality, and it should be for the price that it is. <laughs> I'll link it in the description below. I'm not entirely sure where this can be purchased, but I'll hopefully get some international links up there, and some Australian ones if you're local too. Ah, what am I going to do on this first page? I don't know. I think I'm actually going to start with this cover page, and this will be what I do today. So my idea for the front page of this book is coming from my previous sketchbook. I painted this page at the end of it, and I used that lettering book as reference to write some words in, which I really like. I'm also going off this picture here, which is a really quick sketch I did in gouache. Here's the photo for it. So I'm actually going to use that magnolia that I photographed a few weeks ago for the front page of this with some writing and I've mocked it up on this piece of paper here. So basically all I did with this is I put the photo into Photoshop, I put a filter on it which is like an outline and then I've just printed that rather than printing the whole picture and wasting all of my coloured ink because my cyan is really low and I didn't want to have to run out. So I've just done a really basic outline of it. So I've used this alphabet for sketchbook, this alphabet here for Becky's, and up the top here I used this embossing script here just to write welcome to. So I've kind of stuck them on the page here a little bit so I can get an idea. I think I might take these off, draw the flower first into the book, and then 
arrange these properly so I can get them perfectly aligned onto the page. Up here I'm going to be putting the dates of when I started and finished the book. I've got my light pad here which I'm going to trace all of this stuff onto because there's no way I'm freehanding that again. It took me so long to draw these letters and I'm just going to go over everything in a pencil and then I will ink everything or at least the letters in pen and colour in this flower that's going to be beside it. Don't know what I'm doing over here yet but at least I've got half of the page spread organized. It was definitely a good idea drawing the flower in first because then I was able to position the letters so much more easily afterwards. Now I know this is a sketchbook and ideally I should have actually sketched the flower in but I can't possibly do that. It's the first page. It must be perfect. <laughs> okay not really. I mean you could put anything in a sketchbook, even scribbles, it really doesn't matter. But the thing is that this book costed me so much money. Because it's 100% cotton and really high quality, I just feel like I want to put more quality drawings and paintings in here. I mean this may change into the book, but the first page I always like to have something really nice on the cover if I can. And I'd been inspired by a few other YouTubers videos. In particular Jess Carp who does some amazing sketchbooks and I just felt like I wanted to do something similar and I thought it would be really in fun to incorporate some of the lettering from that book into the front page of my sketchbook. Normally I just write in with my regular handwriting but I thought I'd try and go a little bit higher effort this time. These letters took me ages but I think it was worth doing a rough copy first of them and then tracing them into my book because the outcome's actually really good and I am super happy with how the pencil drawing is looking so far. And now it's time to ink those letters. I'm going with a Micron 10 and I also had this Uniball Eye which I tried out. It turned out that does not work very well in the book at all. It was actually feathering a little bit but the Micron worked perfectly so I will be sticking with fine liners because that Uniball just was not good at all. You can see it feathering a little bit here on that W so I got rid of that pretty quickly and I'm just using the fine liner by Micron. And quite often in a new sketchbook I will have a test page somewhere so I can try out pens and see if they're going to run. But as I said this paper's really expensive and I really didn't want to waste any of it on a test page. I'm using a skinnier Micron pen here, I think it's a 05. And this Becky's didn't turn out as well as the Welcome To part because I just couldn't get the lines straight and I made a bit of a scratchy mess in a few places. So it's not perfect. I do end up actually deciding to colour over the letters later because I just didn't like how they were looking. You can see that C has a very wobbly line. I mean I could have used a tiny little ruler to draw the straight letters but I thought that would be just a bit too perfect. I do want to have some handwrittenness to this book and not make everything perfect. That's not going to happen anyway, that S is totally stuffed at the bottom. Sketchbook turned out okay, I went back to that thicker fine liner pen. So when it comes to sketchbooks they most definitely don't have to be perfect art books. I actually have quite a few different ones that I'm working in at the moment and a whole load of unfinished sketchbooks that I really need to go back to. I tend to use different kinds of sketchbooks for different purposes. So sketchbooks that have not so great paper I'm not particularly bothered about. I'll have some quick sketches in there, half finished pieces, doodles, just random scribbles, things like that. Some might be graphite sketches, pen sketches and even things like coloured pencils or markers. So it's okay to just do whatever you want in your sketchbook. But like I said this one's pretty expensive so I do want to make a bit more effort to have some more finished pieces in it. I cannot believe how long it took me to do the lettering in here but it was actually pretty fun and I was enjoying it a lot. Now I'm moving over to the Magnolia drawing and I'm using coloured pencils here but not just any coloured pencils, these ones are watercolour pencils and they are Super Colours by Karen Dash. I picked those because it had the pinks that I liked and I thought would go nicely for the Magnolia. So this is cold pressed paper and it does have somewhat of a tooth or texture to the paper, though it is still fairly smooth and I found that the pencils worked quite well in here. I'm using very light layers to begin with because I wanted to build them up and I am going to use water here to activate all of the pencil and make that colour really start to stand out. 
I never ended up using watercolour pencils in my Etch-a-Sketch books because the paper felt too kind of soft and really really toothy. I just didn't feel like it would be a good surface for the pencils but I really wanted to try it out in this book and I'm actually really happy with how the pencils worked on the paper. I did consider painting this with watercolours because I really want to know how those work as well but in the end I just decided that the pencils would be really fun and here I'm colouring in Becky's because it just needed something. I'm doing an ombre effect from dark to light pink and just painting it in so it's all blended together. I really love the colour combination here, I just think it's so pretty. For some reason I'm really into pink and purple lately. It's my girly side coming out. <laughs> And then I used some more neutral browns and olive greens for the rest of the flower, the stem part and the branch. Which I've extended out further than the photograph because then it covers the entire page. I'm using my favourite Isabe watercolour brush to activate all of the pencil because it's made of sable hair and even though it's a fairly fine brush it does hold a lot of water so that's what I was really wanting to have enough water to blend out the pencil without it being too much. So I'm going over the flower again with another layer. I made sure to let the paper fully dry because if you put pencil on a slightly damp paper it's just going to make such a horrendous mess. It really sinks into the paper and then you can't move it again. So make sure your paper is fully dry. Sometimes it's a good idea to leave it overnight or at least for a few hours just to make sure that it is. And I just wanted another layer to really build up the saturation of the colours. I mean, they are still fairly delicate because it is a nice light pink and not meant to be super saturated. But it really benefited from a second layer because it took away any pencil streaks that I had on that first layer. <laughs> and I'm doing the same for the rest of the flower here. This did actually take me quite a long time to do. Normally I'm quite impatient and I tend to rush things, but I really just tried to take my time and achieve something that I was really happy with. And I have to say that I am really proud of how this page has turned out. It's probably the best cover page of a sketchbook that I have ever done and I just love it so much. I finished off the flower with a bit of white highlight from this pen and I'm really loving this simplistic design with a very limited colour palette and just the letters and the flowers. I decided to leave the background white because it really just makes the flower stand out and the letters too, but I did rule a little box up in the corner here and this is where I'm going to put my start and end dates. So I've written in the starting date and left room for the end. Well that's turned out alright. The pencils worked pretty well on this paper, I'm very happy about that. And my lettering's a little bit wobbly, but that's not too bad. I think colouring these ones in really helped out. And I've got a little space there for finished whenever I get this book done. I've also got this blank page, and I'm not entirely sure what to do with it, but I think I might want to put a pocket on the front of the cover rather than in the back, because there's no pockets in this book. And I've got this nice piece of paper, which I rummaged out of the scrapbook drawer area so I think I might stick this on and that will kind of cover most of this page it matches with that so I like the color scheme going on it's very pink and girly that inside cover is actually watercolor paper as well to match the rest of the sketchbook but I just wasn't in the mood to draw anything else I just wanted to do something simple and not take away from my flower painting which I was really proud of so I cut down this piece of scrapbook paper with the paper trimmer just to make sure it was nice and straight and I didn't get it quite right the first time I needed to cut just a little bit more off at the end. I really like this piece of paper, it's so lovely. I've got one of those corner cutter things, those are so awesome, I highly recommend getting one. I only rounded two corners on the left side and this one is a one inch circle punch which I've taken half a circle out to indicate that it's a pocket. And I've got a skinny little glue bottle here, which is really good for getting fine lines. It's just PVA glue, nothing special, but it will hold that paper down really well. I'm putting a very thin line around three sides of the paper so that it will glue down and the half circle punch side will stay open as a little pocket. Although I think I stuck it down a little too firmly, so it's not really going to hold very much in it but I should be able to stuff a few things inside. I had this piece of cardboard as well with a rose design on and I'm making a second pocket going upright just to fill up that space really. 
and the colours match everything else. So here's an idea of how to use the pocket, stuffing it with other cute pieces of paper that I found in my collection. I also decided to stick another piece of paper on top in that white space. I'm going to put my contact details on that just in case I lose the book because that would be devastating if I couldn't get it back. So I'll put my phone number and email address on there. All done! Well, I'm pretty happy with how this has come out. This is my opening page. I love the colours in it and I think the lettering has actually turned out pretty well. And then over here I've just got matching colours with little pockets so I can put things in. And I will be writing in some contact details here a bit later off camera so that if I lose the book people can contact me. But I'm super excited with how this is starting out. And now I've only got all of these pages to fill. I'm liking the book so far. I'm really hoping the paper's going to hold up for me. We'll find out over time, I suppose. Well, thank you so much for watching. As always, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Oh, I've still got a band-aid on that one. <laughs> and if you want to subscribe for more videos, I'm posting them pretty much every week. You might also want to check out my previous sketchbook tour, which is here, and I'll have another video over here for you to view. And in the meantime, I hope you're having a great day. I'm sure you'll see me using this book in future videos. So that's all I've got for today. I'll swatch you later. Bye!